Good morning from MWC 2025. I'm here together with Majda Lalul Kasir, Vice President and Head of Customer Unit West and Southern Africa at Ericsson. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello, great to be here. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure, thank you. MWC 2025, what are you showcasing this year here and what are the highlights? Well, uh, this year the theme is, uh, you know, step into what's next. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of opportunities out there in the market and we are showcasing a lot of them here on our booth in Ericsson. But uh, the main theme is how we create this collaboration between the different, you know, actors of the ecosystem and how we can, you know, do things differently. Yeah. I mean, so far we've been, you know, building networks in a certain way, but I think we need to to start thinking about how to approach the business part in a certain way, how to build the networks in a way that we can unlock new revenue streams for everyone, for all the actors of the ecosystem. So you will see a lot about AI, about you know uh, the cloud, differentiated networks, how we can unlock the capabilities of 5G for APIs, etc. A lot happening, but what I'm also very excited about is everything that we've done this year for the African continent. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of thought leadership sessions, you know, uh, bringing together leaders from across, you know, the continent, from the CSP side, from the regulators, and trying to see what we can do together to unlock the full potential of the uh, digital uh, transformation of Africa. So exciting times ahead. Absolutely, absolutely. Looking forward to a very exciting times. Great. So Africa is experiencing a rapid digital transformation process. So what is Ericsson's take on that? So what would you see from a technology perspective, solution perspective, and more from a broader overview, how do you see the progress? Well, we see that things are accelerating, and I think this acceleration started already post-COVID time. We see that now, all you know, uh, industries are rethinking the way they approach their customers. Yeah. They're rethinking the, their business models, and we believe that digital transformation plays a key role yeah. in unlocking the potential across industries. And of course, we have a role to play there. And we believe that connectivity is the lifeblood of this, you know, transformation. Uh, of course, we are uh, in a continent where 4G is continuously growing. So yeah. 4G is there to stay. But we see a lot of deployments happening uh, right now in the five. We're in conversations with our uh, partners on how you know to leverage on the capabilities of 5G to uh, you know uh, uh, close the digital divide. How we can leverage on it for you know deployment of fixed wireless yeah. access. How we can bring connectivity to the rural areas. There are so many untapped potential yeah. in the continent, and we believe that connectivity together with other technologies like AI, like you know opening uh, networks exposure yeah. to APIs can bring so much uh, possibilities, not only for the business, but also for the society in Africa. So when we look at 4G especially, and, and 5G, would you say that in Africa, we're still in a phase where we have more like a conservative transition to 5G due to affordability of devices and the technology on site? That's true. Uh, I mean, 4G is still the dominant uh, technology when it comes to data consumption yeah. today in, in the continent. Uh, and 5G is at its uh, start. But we, we've seen, you know, some of the partners taking bold steps and yeah. going already. Some of them are already, you know, uh, launching 5G standalone. Yeah. Uh, we've seen many deployments happening. Of course, it's still concentrated in the urban areas, yeah. but we believe that we will see an acceleration in the deployment. And we've, uh, I mean, in our latest mobile report we we believe that 4g will count for something around 35 percent of the connections by 2030 and 5g will catch up will will be you know the second technology for data consumption around 30 percent so so we, we we will see the growth that is happening in other places accelerating here as well in the continent All right. so we have seen over the last let's say I would say 12 to 16 months uh, a very fast paced development and deployment of AI solutions through all sectors in the industry. So how does AI affect you as of today from an internal perspective, but also how does it play out for your clients or customers? 
Yeah, well, Ericsson has been working on AI for decades. I mean, it's not a, a new topic, but of course now with the generative AI, it's becoming, you know, the something that we see acceleration of use. Of course, AI for us internally is a way to create efficiency, increase productivity. We, we have, you know, have it embedded in our product, but we have it also embedded in our factories and the way we uh, align and streamline our processes. But towards our partners, we believe AI is a way on one side, you know, to increase efficiency and productivity, yeah. on the other side, to create more business growth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me give you an example. I mean, today, uh, when we look at the networks, AI is enabling us, you know, to optimize the way the networks operate without having to have, you know, too many human uh, intervention. And that creates a lot of efficiency and creates insights for the operators themselves that they can leverage on to, you know, create some auto healing of the network. And reduce the cost at some point as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, when we talk about efficiency, cost comes with it, of course. I mean, we, we're looking at also uh, sustainability effect. I mean, uh, we have AI uh, software features that enable us to reduce power consumption in our products. And that, of course, has a cost effect, but has also a sustainability effect. So definitely, I mean, both on the efficiency part and on the business growth, there are plenty of possibilities leveraging an AI. And you will see here on our booth many examples of how we're doing it. Yeah, very interesting. So, bridging the digital divide remains still a big challenge for the continent. What is Ericsson's opinion about it and what is, let's say, the solution to tackle these challenges? Well, I think, I think this has to be a sort of a collaboration between the public and the private sector. I mean, we, this, this is a, a very important topic for uh, the African continent, for, you know, its next uh, uh, development uh, phase and, and we do believe that it has to be through collaboration. Uh, we, Ericsson, have uh, many collaborations across the continent. I mean, we're uh, working with Smart Africa, we're working with uh, UNICEF, we're working with UNESCO. We have many, I mean, we're looking at how technology can help uh, closing the digital divide in education. We have also financial inclusion that is very important and we're doing that through our mobile uh, financial services. But what is is also important is to understand that connectivity now is becoming a basic need for the continent. It's not a luxury. So we need to work together on making sure that we have spectrum availability, harmonized way of managing the spectrum, but also a way to address the needs of the um, remote areas. Yeah. So bringing connectivity to the digit, to the uh, rural uh, zones is very important. And there Ericsson is playing also a very uh, important role whether it's through fixed wireless access solutions, I mean, leveraging on the 4G or 5G connectivity, or through some specific rural solutions that we're bringing there, making sure that we also offer a good quality broadband networks to, you know, everywhere, basically, and to everyone. You mentioned public and private sector partnership, and you also mentioned briefly Smart Africa. So, is it a very important factor of the work and on the on the uh, on the African continent to say, okay, let's come together as a nation, take advantage of associations like Smart Africa, who combines a lot of uh, member states together to discuss the that's the way how we can tackle certain challenges. I think, I think uh, solving big problems we, uh, starts with having the right conversations yeah. and uh, through this partnership we want to bring all thought leaders together, we want to bring all key uh, stakeholders together and I, I think Ericsson has been playing this role for many uh, years. We've been you know, enabling the African development for over 100 years and, and uh, that's what we want to do now. We want to, you know, to continue having this conversation about how to enable the digital transformation of uh, the continent and it goes through you know having this collaboration with the entire ecosystem understanding the needs on one hand but also making sure that we have the policies and the regulations that make it easy to implement in the continent and you've talked also about the uh, the affordability of devices this is also an important factor that could enable us to take the next step in you know uh, 5G adoption, 4G acceleration. So definitely something we are keen to do and we continue you know, to have this dialogue with all our partners in the continent. And where you need a public sector to reduce 
logistics, uh, uh, make it more affordable. Absolutely. So public sector, I mean, plays a key role here, specifically uh, when it comes to creating the right platform for uh, for innovation and for collaboration, but also when it comes to the policies. And one important uh, aspect to our industry is the spectrum uh, uh, availability and the way the spectrum is made available to the different stakeholders. The harmonization, because that's what creates the economy of scale, and that's what makes us, you know, able to bring affordable solutions yeah, to the content. I agree. Thank you. So, looking ahead, so as my last question, what's Ericsson's long-term vision for Africa? Well, I mean, uh, a few years ago, we've uh, launched our strategy, Africa in Motion. Uh, we do believe in the uh, potential of the continent. We do believe that this is a continent where we have a high percentage of youth and we know that the young generation is the one actually driving innovation so we are there you know to support this new generation this new digital natives you know to uh, unlock all their the possibilities that are around them and so our commitment to the continent is to continue to bring the best of our technology to of course our partners uh, primarily the csps but now we are looking into how we can also tap into other areas like the enterprise sector see what we can you know do in collaboration with the csps or directly with the enterprises and we do believe that the continent has uh, a lot of potential in areas like mining for example where we can bring real solutions in education system we know how important is this so so these are the kind of things that we are committed to continue developing together with our partners in the continent so you optimistic outlook absolutely absolutely of course i mean uh, uh, this is now a new era of how we do business on how we build the networks and i do believe the african continent is the highest growing uh, markets right now so so definitely a lot of potential ahead i fully agree thanks for your time it was a pleasure thank you thank you it was, it was tech african news from mobile world congress 2025 you can find more on techafricanews.com